I, I'm not sure that every person here is a little familiar with my pictures. I want to start to show just a few pictures to you, and after we speak. I must speak uh, to you a little bit of my history, because we've been speaking on this during all my, my, my speech here. I born in 1944 in Brazil, in the times that Brazil were not yet a market economy. I born in a farm, a farm that were more than 50% of rainforest yet, a marvelous place. I live with incredible birds, incredible animals, a swimming of small rivers with our caimans. It was about 35 families that live in this farm. And everything that we produce in this farm, we consume. Very few things went to the market. Once a year, the only thing that went to the market was the cattle that we produced. And we made the trips of about 45 days to reach the slaughterhouse, bring thousands of head of cattle, and put about 20 days traveling back to reach our farm again. When I was 15 years old, it was necessary to me to leave this place, I go to a little bit big town, much bigger, and uh, where I did the second part of secondary school. There, I learned different things. Brazil was starting to urbanize, industrialize, and uh, I knew the politics. I became a little bit radical. I was a member of leftist parties, and uh, I became an activist. I made uh, my university, I became an economist, I made the master's degrees in economy. And uh, the most important thing of my life happens also in this time. I met an incredible girl that became uh, my best friend all my life long, and that my associate in everything that I did till now, my wife, Lelia Wanik Salgado. Brazil had colonized very strong, we fight very hard about the dictatorship in a moment, it was necessary to us, or go to the clandestinity with a weapon in the hands, or leave Brazil. We were too young, and uh, our organization thought that the better was to us to go out. And we went to France, where I made a PhD in economics. Lelia became an architect. I worked after for one investment bank. We made a lot of trips, finance development, economic projects in Africa with the World Bank. And one day, photography made a total invasion in my life. I became a photographer. I abandoned everything, became a photographer. And I started to do the photography that uh, was important for me. Many people tell that I were a photojournalist, that we were an anthropologist photographer, that we were an activist photographer. But I did much more than that. I put photography as my life. I live totally inside photography, doing long-term projects. And I want to show you just a few pictures of, again, uh, that you see inside the social projects that I went, published many books on these on this, uh, photographies. But I just show you a few ones now. In the 90s, during the 1994 to 2000, I photographed a story called Migration. It became a book, became a show. And, uh, but during that I was photographing this, I lived a very hard moment in my life. Most in Rwanda, 
I saw in Rwanda the total brutality. I saw the death by thousands per day. I lose the faith in our peace. I didn't believe that was more possible for us to live longer. And uh, I started to be attacked by my own staphylococcus. I started to have infection everywhere. When I did love with my wife, I had no sperm that came out of me. I had uh, blood. I went to see a friend a doctor in Paris, thought that I was completely sick. He made long examination and told me, Sebastian, you are not sick, your prostate is perfect. What happens? You saw so many deaths that you are dying. You must stop. Stop. You must stop because the country will be dead on this. And uh, I take a decision to stop. I was really upset with photography, with everything in the world. And I take a decision to go back where I born. It was a big coincidence. It was the moment that my parents become very old. I have seven sisters. I'm the only man in my family. And they take together the decision to transfer this land to Lely and myself. When we received this land, this land was as dead as Iowa was. When I was a kid, more than 50% rainforest. When we received the land, it was less than half a percent rainforest. As all my region, to build the development, Brazilian development, we destroy a lot of our forests. As you did here in the United States, as you did in India, everywhere on this planet, to build our development, we came to a huge contradiction that we destroy around us, everything. This farm that had thousands of heads of cattle, had just a few hundreds, and we didn't know how to do with this. And Lele came with an incredible idea, a crazy idea, said, why you don't put back here the rainforest that was before? You tell that to born in paradise, let's build the paradise again. And I went to see a, a good friend that was engineer in forest that prepared a project for us. And we start. We start to plant. And last, first year, we lose a lot of trees. Second year, less. And it's slowly by slowly. This dead land is started to burn again. We started to plant hundreds of thousands of trees only local species, only native species, where he built an ecosystem identical to the one that was destroyed. And the life started to come back in an incredible way. It was necessary to us to transform our land in a national park. We transform, we give this land back to the nature, became a national park. We create an institute, institution called Instituto Terra, and we built a big environmental project to raise money everywhere. Here, here in Los Angeles, in the Bay Area, in San Francisco, became tax deductible in the United States, we raised money in Spain, in Italy, a lot in Brazil. We work a lot of companies in Brazil that put money in this project, the government. And uh, the life started to come, and I had a big wish to come back to photography, to photograph again. And in this time, my wish was not more to photograph just one animal that I had photographed all my life long, us. I wish to photograph the other animals, to photograph the landscapes, to photograph us, but us from the beginning, the time that we live in equilibrium with the nature. And uh, I went. I started in the beginning of 2004, and I finished in the end of 2011. We created an incredible amount of the pictures. And uh, the result, Lelia, that's the design of all my books, design of all my shows, she's the creator of the shows. And uh, what we want with these pictures is to create a, a discussion about uh, what uh, we have pristine in the planet and what we must hold in this planet if you want to live, have some equilibrium in your life. And uh, I wanted to see us when uh, we use yes our instruments in stone. We exist yet. I was last week with the Brazilian National Foundation of Indians. And only in Amazonas we have about 110 groups of Indians that are not contacted yet. We must protect this forest in this sense. And these pictures, I hope that we can create a information, a system of information. We try to do a new presentation of the planet. And I want to show you now just a few pictures of this project, please.
Well, this. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is what we must fight hard to hold like it is now. But there is another part that we must together to rebuild, to build our society, our modern, fabulous society. We are in a point that we cannot go back, but we create an incredible contradiction. To build all this, we destroy a lot. Our forest in Brazil, that antique forest that is worth the size of California, is destroyed today in 93 percent. Here, West Coast, you destroy your forest. Around here, no, the redwood forests are gone, gone very fast, disappear. Coming other day from Atlanta here, two days ago, I was flying over deserts. That uh, we made, we provoked within our hands. India has no more trees, Spain has no more trees. And uh, we must rebuild this forest. That is the essence of our life, this forest. We need to breed the only factory capable to transform CO2 in oxygen are the forest. The only machine capable to make the capture of carbon that we are producing, always, same if we reduce them, every activity that you do, we produce CO2, are the trees. I put the question three, four weeks ago, we saw in the newspapers millions of fish that die in Norway, a lack of oxygen in the water. I put myself the question in a moment, we will not have a lack of oxygen for all animal species, our included. That would be very complicated for us. For the water system, the trees are essential. I give you a small example that you understand very easily. You happy people that have a lot of hair in your head. If you take a shower, take you two, three hours to dry your hair if you don't use a dryer machine. Me? One minute is dry. <laughs> the same with the trees. The trees are the hair of our planet. When you have a rain in a place that you have no tree, just a few minutes, the water will arrive in the stream, bring soil, destroying our water source, destroying the rivers, and no humidity to retain. When you have the trees, the root system hold the water. All the branches of the trees, the leaves that come down, create a humid area, and they take months and months of the water, go to the, the, the rivers, and maintain our source, maintain our rivers. This is the most important thing when we imagine that we need water for every activity in life. I want to show you now to finish just a few pictures that for me is very important in that direction. You remember that I tell to you when I received the farm of my parents, that was my paradise, that was the farm. Land completely destroyed, the erosion there, the land dried, no? But you can see in this picture, we were starting to construct an educational center that became a quite a large educational center, environmental center in Brazil, in Brazil. But you see a lot of small spots in this picture. In each point of these spots, we had planted tree. There's thousands of the tree. Now I show you the pictures made exactly in the same point two months ago. I tell you in the beginning that was necessary to us to plant about 2.5 million trees of about 200 different species in order to rebuild the ecosystem. And I show you the last picture. We are with two million trees in the ground now. We are doing the sequestration of about 100,000 tons of carbon with these trees. My friends, it's very easy to do. We did, no? By an accident that happened to me, we went back, we rebuilt an ecosystem. We, here inside the room, uh, I'm believe that we have the same concern. And uh, the model that we create in Brazil, we can transplant it here, we can apply it everywhere around the world. No? And uh, I believe that we can do together. Thank you very much.